Welcome to A-Level and AP Physics, a place where you can improve your understanding of physics with confidence. In the last video, we have discussed about Doppler effect. In today's video, I will explain you what exactly Doppler effect is and how to derive Doppler effect equations. Doppler effect is all about apparent change in frequency of wave. So what exactly it means? It simply means that the frequency produced by a source and frequency observed by a listener. These two are different. And why these two frequencies are different? Because there is a relative motion between observer and source. If there is no relative motion between source and observer, there will be no apparent change. It simply means that the frequency produced by source and frequency observed by listener, these two frequencies will be same if there is no relative motion. If you look at the first animation, you can simply see that the source is at rest and observer is is also at rest. Simply, we can say there is no relative motion between these two. So the frequency produced and frequency observed, they are the same. If you look at the second animation, you can see that as the source is moving, and when the source is approaching listener, frequency is increasing. And as the source is moving away from listener, frequency is decreasing. So in second animation, observe frequency and frequency produced by source, they are not same. So this is all about Doppler effect. First of all, let's try to understand what exactly time period is. Time period simply we can define that the time passed between two consecutive crest. So what exactly it means we can understand like this. Let's say we have source here and we have a listener that is at this point. So this one is over listener. And the source is producing waves and let's say the first crest received by this listener is 1. And this source produce an other pulse and after a certain period of time, the source will receive the second crest. Let's say this is over second crest. And the time pass between these two crests is simply called time period. As we have already discussed, if there is relative motion between source and listener, frequency observed by listener and the frequency generated by source, these two frequencies will be different. Now, we will derive equations for observed frequency when the source is approaching and when the source is moving away from listener. First of all, look at this animation and try to understand what is happening. Now, if you have uh, watched this animation, you must have some idea about this one, what is happening. So let me explain to you a little more in detail and then we derive equation. So let's say this is point A and this is point B and this is point C. When source was at point A, source produced pulse 1 at time t is equal to 0. And this pulse move from point A to point B in time t is equal to capital T. Capital T is the time period of wave. And in the same time period, means t is equal to capital T, source has also travel distance and distance traveled by source that is equal to speed of source times time period and now the source is at point c and source produced an other pulse and this is pulse 2 let's say this distance is equal to d1 we can simply say and this one let's say this is equal to d2 
Now, what we need to do is we simply need to find out the time observed by observer between two crests. Means observer receive this pulse one and after how long the observer will receive second pulse. This is simply we need to find. So let's say the time observed by observer between two crests. This is equal to T naught. So how we can find out this T naught? Simply we need to find the distance between two crests. Let's say this is the distance. We need to divide by the speed of wave. So I will use VW to make it more clear to you. In fact, VW is equal to V and this is the speed of wave. Now, how we can find the distance between these two crests as we have D1. So we can say the distance D1 minus D2. If we subtract D1, D2 from D1, we can find the distance between two crests, mean this crest 2 and crest 1. And we simply need to divide by the speed of wave d1 as it is given to us d is equal to v and time is t. So this is d1 and d2 simply is equal to speed of source times time period and divided by v. I will simply use v now here. So the vw is equal to v. So this is just to make it clear to you. v is the speed of wave. We can little bit rearrange this one. We can write down the t naught is equal to t. This is the time period v speed of wave and u sub s its speed of source and this is divided by v now next thing we also need to understand what is the relationship between time period and frequency frequency is simply is equal to one over time period so this is concept we need to understand now if we take inverse on both sides we can simply write down one over t naught uh, this is equal to v over v minus u s and simply multiply by one over t now one over t naught this is equal to frequency observed and this will be equal to v divided by v minus u s multiply by frequency of so so this is our formula and this one we can use to find the observed frequency when the source is approaching listener let me write down sub s here so it means this is frequency of source or the frequency of sound produced by source so this is how we can calculate observed frequency from here we can see that as the denominator is smaller than numerator so observed frequency is greater than frequency of source equation for observed frequency now let me explain to you how you can calculate lambda naught or you can say wavelength observed by listener lambda naught simply we can say that this is equal to v means the speed of sound times time period minus speed of source times time period and time period is common we can just take this out we can write down v minus u s so if time period is given speed of source is given and speed of wave speed of sound is given we can calculate lambda naught but if the time period is not given frequency is given then we simply understand time period is equal to 1 over f and we can rearrange this equation we can write down 
V minus U S divided by frequency. So this is how we can calculate. And this is S means this is the frequency of source.